It all began when John Bausch and Henry Long, two German immigrants, established an optics store in Rochester, New York. The store grew into a firm that manufactured the best optical products in the country. They produced photographic lenses, microscopes, binoculars, lenses for camera shutters, and various types of looking glass. Nevertheless, the one invention by Bausch and Lomb has achieved a cult status. Developed for World War II pilots, sunglasses called Aviator became immensely popular after General MacArthur victory in Philippines. The city, and the enemy still fought bitterly at the other, MacArthur entered Manila. He had kept the soldiers' faith. Military influence on public tastes after World War II boosted the popularity of aviators among citizens, causing immediate mass appeal. After the war, Bausch and Lomb decided to develop the sunglass range, which they called Ray-Ban, and started marketing them as the ultimate, most reliable and stylish protection against the sun. Ads showed how sunglasses are of use in any season, and shot after, Women's Range was launched as well. In June 1954, Ray-Ban published the first ad in Vogue magazine. However, the main role in current positioning of Ray-Bans was played by Hollywood celebrities. First spotted on James Dean at the set of his most celebrated film, Rebel Without a Cause, the new model, Wayfarer, became Hollywood's favorite accessory. Oh, too fast you for better me, give me something. You better give me something fast. Marilyn Monroe, Robert Redford, Mick Jagger, Patti Smith, Bob Dylan, and other celebrities were known to have a pair. Even Andy Warhol was rarely seen without Wayfarers, be it in public or at work. Malcolm Little notably wore optical Clubmaster model, while President John Kennedy was mistakenly thought to prefer Wayfarers. This myth, along with Audrey Hepburn's performance in the 1961 classic Breakfast at Tiffany's, where she wore Oliver Goldsmith's sunglasses, nevertheless boosted demand for Ray-Ban products. In 1982, Bausch and Lomb signed a contract that would feature Ray-Bans in film and television. Featured in approximately 60 films a year, The Wayfarers hit over 1 in 5 million in sales in 1986, as in Tom Cruise in Top Gun. Sorry, we happen to see a MiG-28 do a 4G negative dive. SK Billy's super sounds of the 70s weekend just keeps on trucking. The 90s defied a new era in fashion and Ray-Ban became an obsolete relic. Thus, in 1999, Bausch and Lobb sold the brand to Luxottica, the Italian sunglass manufacturer and retailer, the biggest in the world. Luxottica devised a tailored approach to Ray-Ban. They stopped production for a year, and in the words of ex-CEO Andrea Guerra, okay, We refurbished everything. After its relaunch, Ray-Ban Classics price soared from $30 to over 100 euros. In 2007, a new campaign called Never Hide was launched, positioning Ray-Ban as an accessory for progressive and young at soul. Print ads and commercials showed people engaged in creative, romantic and risky endeavors, emphasizing the free spirit of the brand. The campaign took advantage of YouTube to implement guerrilla marketing and its numerous videos went viral. Ray-Ban follows the augmentation product concept, which includes three levels. The core layer is intangible yet provides values to consumers by offering functional benefits, offering protective eyewear designed to prevent sunlight from damaging eyes. The expected layer translates core product benefits into a product that people will buy and add some differentiation from competitors. These include style, packaging, variety of designs, models, and different price ranges. The augmented layer consists of added value for a premium price. Ray-Ban offers lifestyle value by allowing customization, yet its timeless design and heritage allows to pass the pieces to future generations. Emotional benefits of Ray-Ban allude to the numerous prominent figures that impacted society and culture, and thus, the wearer implies his belonging to this influential group of people. An early innovator, Ray-Ban preserves this advantage by releasing more models, using cutting-edge materials for extra light wear, and has a wide variety of lenses for UV protection and optics. 
Ray-Ban's brand equity will be analyzed using the brand equity permit. It has four layers and each component will be discussed in detail. Most prominent models of Ray-Ban are easily recognizable because of their color design. A variety of commercials showcase consumption situations that are lively, enjoyable, quirky, and sometimes intense. The expertise of Luxottica and work with numerous designers result in perfectly fitting eyewear. Since 1962, Ray-Ban has been testing its lens with drop wall test. It verifies the lens resistance to particularly violent blows. During the test, the lens is struck by a steel ball dropped from 1.27 meters. r and uses special molded material that provides high strength to weight ratio to eliminate the risk of frames breaking. Using the vintage sketches as inspiration, the design team visually refreshes every model using softwares. Roberto Verganzi's framework for innovation strategy was employed to determine how tech advancements allowed Ray-Ban to establish the meaningful design classic. This grid is what is called technology epiphany, a dormant meaning that comes with a breakthrough waiting to be uncovered. Ray-Ban's breakthrough came with new green lenses that blocked sun rays for pilots while allowing them to see the dashboard. As Bausch & Lomb pursued this innovation, they developed a product range for outdoor activities. Circulating in the market, these innovative products generated new meaning. Meaning of luxury, high quality, optical device that protected eye from glare and also emphasized the wearer's love for skiing, shooting and other activities. As celebrities joined the process, Ray-Ban's current iconic status was achieved. Imagery defines how consumer wants to perceive themselves. Active, excited, cool, young and independent. As the biggest eyewear manufacturer in the world, Luxottica guarantees the quality of every single product. Consumer also takes this seriously with countless YouTube videos on how to spot a fake Ray-Ban. It's comparing a real Ray-Ban Wayfair to a fake Ray-Ban. Authentic replica. The feelings that brand wants to induce are related to fun and excitement towards life celebration of individuality and enjoying the moment. Ray-Ban invests a lot in sustaining behavioral loyalty by teaming up with projects such as The Boiler Room, identifying its target market as young and free-spirited people. Furthermore, the sense of community is nurtured across a variety of online platforms. The Wall of Legends, for example, allows users to share Instagram photos using specific hashtags to reveal their passion. Active engagement is prompted through social media where relevant and useful content is shared. Ray-Ban also makes use of mobile apps. Rewind the app allows users to mix tape using old-school technology. Try-on app shows how the newest Ray-Ban fits you, while Reflection app capitalizes on selfie frenzy, allowing users to take artistic pictures of themselves. Additionally, Regard gives access to hundreds of personalized emojis most of which, of course, were Ray-Ban. Ray-Ban has been a leader in developing new innovations and functional attributes since 1930s. However, today, these innovations and technologies are not communicated to the public, resulting in Ray-Ban products being merely an inexpensive fashion statement. Instead, Ray-Ban could defend its innovator position by specifically revealing the technological advantage of the brand. For example, they could launch a website that would allow to view different landscapes through Ray-Ban's different lenses. Luxury brands are using classic designs more often, resulting in Ray-Ban losing its exclusive image and appeal. To sustain competition, Ray-Ban should collaborate more with upscale designers and artists such as Palamo Picasso and exclusive brands like Agni and Vitmon. Ray-Ban could also use new and usual materials such as wood and glitter or recycled plastic. Ray-Ban campaigns have been too identical, leaving consumers uninterested or bored with a diluted brand message. Print ads, for example, contain too much context, losing focus on the actual product, while numerous commercials contain too much storytelling. Ray-Ban should focus more on its products, make them appear desirable again. They should launch more endorsement deals with modern muses, such as Kendall Jenner, 
Blake Lively, and Justin Bieber, showing various consumption situations in a more glamorous setting.